as we know, there is a special session going on in Charleston today. That will continue tomorrow, as we understand it as well. And they gaveled into session this morning at 9 o'clock. So we're going to hopefully get a report on that tomorrow morning on the show. We thought we had one scheduled for today, but because they were to gavel in at 9, uh, that uh, effectively wiped out our update from Charleston. However, there is news with the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, which you may have read recently, is uh, absorbing and or being merged with the Morgan County Rescue Mission. And in studio with us right now is the pastor of the Rescue Mission, Tim Garino. Good to see you, sir. Hey, thanks for having me out. And it's an honor replacing those guys down there in Charleston. What an honor. Little but, shoes to fill, my um, brother. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But, uh, <laughs> but hey, thanks for having me out. And uh, we're, we're excited. Uh, uh, officially, as of July 25th, um, Morgan County Homeless Coalition merged into the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, and now we're just the, the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. And it, that doesn't diminish, uh, I just want to say this real clear, it doesn't diminish any services up there in Morgan County. In fact, it's going to increase the services. And it, it's going to go from uh, just a winter shelter where, where they uh, had November through April winter shelter, and they went from church to church. Now it's going to be 365 days of the year. It's going to be year-round. Well, they ended up getting a building sometime, sometime last year. They, uh, we've been in negotiations. We've been back and forth uh, as, as, a, as uh, their board, our board, meeting together for, I don't know, nine months. I can't even remember um, how it all worked out. It, it, it's, it was an act of God. Uh, Cynthia, one of their board members, came and visited the mission one day and did a tour. And I just, and Matt will tell you, I'm all over the place down at the mission, just like this morning when he texted me. I'm in the warehouse, I'm all over, and I'm walking down the street, and this lady says to me, are you, are you Pastor Tim? I said, yeah. She goes, well, can you give me a tour? And I was on my way up to my office. I had a bunch of stuff to do, and I'm thinking, man, I really don't want to do this. I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. so I said, sure, come on, come on. And I, when we make a long story short, she said, I'm from Morgan County uh, Homeless Coalition and wanted to come down and see your place. And that just kicked off a whole big thing. And July 25th, we officially merged. Uh, their board voted. Our board voted. We met with um, uh, George McVeigh, Trump and Trump lawyer up there in Berkeley County Springs, uh, signed all the paperwork. So officially, we're one. The Hope House is the, is the building that they're, um, that's going to be housing nine women. They're in the process, almost have it completed. They're putting the floors down today, doors next week, and a bunch of other stuff. That's right on 47, uh, 47 uh, Union Street, right next to the 7-Eleven, right next to Refugee Church. The Refugee Church, it's their building. They are, we're renting it from them, and uh, they're getting it all done. Uh, Morkley County uh, Homeless Coalition is a board of folks, and that board will, uh, the board will dissolve, mm -hmm. and then some of their board members will... Uh, uh, come into our board, and and we'll be one, you know, one one board, one mission, one uh, program. We hope to do more up there in Morgan County. This is just the beginning, and like I said, it will be uh, the the Hope House will now be 365 days of the year. We hope to get staff trained and everything open. But September 9th, we're doing an official passing of baton. There's going to be a, a, a an event up there. You can look up on our Facebook and eventually on our web page. It's going to be a fundraiser, a walkathon. It'll all end up at the Hope House. And then Dick, who's the president, uh, previous president of Morgan County Homeless Co Coalition, will pass the baton to me uh, and tell a little story about all what Morgan, what they did to get that going. They've been doing it for several years and doing a great job up there ministering to those that are homeless up there. But now we're going to become one. He's going to pass the baton to me, and then we're going to take it from there. But we're going to increase the services. Again, it's going to be 365 days of the year instead of just November through April. And then... Uh, we're, we are in need, if anybody out there, we're in need of a 12-passenger van. If someone would like to donate us a 12-passenger van or give us the money to purchase a 12-passenger van, we'll, we'll need that to go back and forth, to shuttle people back and forth. Also, people will say to me, well, why just women? Uh, women have the least amount of bed uh, beds in the wintertime and year-round here in the Martinsburg, Morgan County, and even Jefferson County area. Uh, we turn away 35 plus women a year because we have no place to put them. I know Morgan County uh, has turned away a lot of women or has housed them previously in motel rooms with vouchers. Um, it is a big need. There's the least amount of beds. Um, Bethany House has only so many. And then Epic is for domestic violence. And 
it just gets filled too fast. And it's a shame that women, um, you guys were just talking with uh, Attorney General Patrick Morsi that, uh, you know, the opioid crisis. Women suffer just as much as men on the street with the drug issue. And in fact, more because they have to sacrifice more. They have to sacrifice their body sexually in all kinds of other ways to get housing, to do all kinds of stuff, to stay safe. Go from boyfriend to boyfriend just to stay safe on the street. Or they're trafficked on the street. A lot of them are trafficked. We see it. They come into mission every day. You've seen a lot. Of, you, mm -hmm. You've seen you you're you, you've been there ministered and did he tell you they did a cornhole tournament he 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 and and he he, he tried to rig it he tried to get get a a, a ringer with him no. playing cornhole try to beat our guy no he did no he did a good job well, that's a heck of a transition <laughs> no I'll, I'll get I back i don't know where that came from i'll, I'll get know. back there. but they they had a they had a uh, their church came and did a cornhole tournament for our guys mm -hmm. it was I tell you, our guys are still talking about it. You, well, man, we got pictures. You need to get some pictures up. On, <laughs> no, all right, I'll take you up on that. Yeah, but and, and it was great. Sorry. But I, I just want to mention. But um, I got fifty million things in my. <laughs> so I can go. I can go in all kinds of directions, man. I'll tell you. But um, but the women suffer the most. They really do. And 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 a lot of people don't see that. Don't understand that. We see it every day. We have women. Uh, I had a man come to me yesterday and said to me, "Hey, Pastor Tim, when is the." The 604 project gonna get done. I said, brother, we were 200,000 short. I'd like to get it open by November 1st. We're 95% remodeled, completed. I mean, literally, uh, you gotta walk through it. It's, it's it blow your mind. Um, it, it's amazing. And he said, I said, why? What's going on? He goes, well, my wife and I and my child are staying in a motel. We just got a voucher. Prior to that, we were out in the camp. We were out in the woods camping. And I said, come on, man. I said, we we gotta help you get some. He said. Uh, can I get on that list? I say, well, yeah, I took his name and everything. There ain't a day that doesn't go by that I don't get a phone call for a female for housing or a family for housing, uh, either in Berkeley, Morgan, or Jefferson County. There's just nothing. And they're either camping, and with the females, we, we see a lot of them, and we know them personally, and we'll say, hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm with this guy now because I can get a motel room with this guy. Mm -hmm. But then she's putting herself on the computer, you know, the internet, and then they, they prostitute her and all that stuff. But that's mm -hmm. the only way she can get a place to stay. Drugs are involved. So uh, we're going to merge. I mean, we're, we're already merged. This is going to be a benefit to the women. They're going to go through treatment. They're going to go through recovery. They're going to go through classes. They're going to go through everything the men are going through and then also have a job uh, opportunity to get jobs because we'll plug those women into the same job opportunities that the men get. So. It's, it, I'm excited. Um, we are going to develop Morgan County uh, down the road. We have some um, great dreams for what we're going to do there and even provide more services. But this is a, a step. Uh, this is the big, the, uh, this is the big step going forward. But we're excited. It was a God thing how it all came together. And, <laughs> and I just want to read this real quick here to you. It's, it, it's uh, Psalms 130, 133, 1. How wonderful it is, how pleasant for God's people to live together in harmony. And it's amazing because to bring two big groups together mm -hmm. and, 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 and to, for them to buy into our vision and everything we do, um, that's a hard thing to do nowadays is everybody wants their own little club. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants their own little group. And um, I, I want to give them a lot of credit up there in Morgan County and, my, and uh, their board, uh, Dick, the president, uh, the, all the people up there. Um, and I'm going to give my board credit. Uh, they came together as one and put things aside. And now we're going to unite and, and be because, you know, when you unite and you get together, you're stronger. Mm -hmm. And because and we don't get government funding, they uh, we're, we're you know, they're they're joining us and they know we don't take government funding. But uh, we're going to have a great opportunity. And, and you know, I, there's a young lady that came in the other day. She came in. She's brand new to the area, she, and um, she's all dirty and everything. We took her to the store. Our thrift store next door changed her. Uh, I got her clothes. She came over into the bathroom. And one of our volunteers, uh, I think it was Donna or Shelly, one of our ladies at the front desk there, went in and helped her change and everything like that. And the lady came out, the volunteer lady came out, and she was almost in tears and said to me, that girl – she hasn't beige, she hasn't anything. I said, so well, because once the whole, once our hope house opens up, they'll have showers, you know, um, once the family shelter opens up, the women can have showers. I mean, that stuff's not out there where mm -hmm. the guys can come in every day and get showers. And they do. They, the mm -hmm. guys that live on the street can come in every day, seven days a week, get showers. There's nothing like that for the women. They have to give up something. And usually it's their body mm -hmm. or some kind of active sex 
to get showers, to get shelter, to get food, to get whatever. And the mission, we see it every day. You see the numbers. You see the people coming in. Um, it, it, we, we have to do something, and it's great to see these uh, uh, folks come together and, and be one. And now we're going to have well, a stronger reach. It, and more this seems like a tremendous oversight. The, the rescue mission is for men, but right. for women, unless you've been battered or prostituted, yeah. then you can go to the women's center. Uh, epic, 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 but, epic right. but but otherwise, there's there's no equivalent to the rescue mission for women who just happen to be well, out there, on the street. There's the Bethany House, but they're packed, and 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 they only have like 14 beds or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, it's small, um, and then that's it. So you have 14 beds, uh, in, in, and there's more than 14 women out there on the street sure. in, in the three counties that need help, and so this has been a problem for some time, and. It's just, uh, it's a God thing. Here we have, I thought I was, I thought I was busy trying to open up one new shelter <laughs> by November 1st. Now it's two, but I, I'm so excited. This stuff lights me up. It gives mm -hmm. me energy. I mean, I jump out of bed in the morning and I'm ready to go. I don't sleep at night. My wife's like, you got to get sleep. I, I, I'm so excited and I'm excited for the possibilities of what the dreams that, that some of the board members of Morgan County have, some of our board members have for the Morgan County area, what we're going to mm -hmm. be able to increase now as we're, as we're one together, we're going to we're able, able to increase services and, and provide more for women and children. And I hate to say that, um, you, you know, when we talk about, when Patrick Morsey's talking about the, uh, the opioid crisis, um, and you know, I'm frustrated with that brother because, and he knows, I see old, old, I see overdoses every day. I see what it happens, and um, man, we're, we're helping so many people. Um, we don't take government money, but some of the stuff, some of the money, is so wasted. And I just sit back and I go, wow, if I had just a little bit of that money, just a little, without all the strings attached, with all, without all the, I got to hire a secretary just to fill out all the paperwork. Um, it, it's amazing what we do. Uh, what God's people do, do every day through the mission, through now with the Morgan County Homeless Coalition coming together, and how many people we reach on a daily basis. It's, it's amazing. We served over almost 9,000 meals last month. That's, a, that's, that's just a mind blower because we were averaging probably 8,300, 8,400. I mean, just last month alone, we were up to almost 9,000 meals. And mm -hmm. I mean... It, it and 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 it's uh the need is growing the drugs are, are, are i to me i see it worse yes i see it as a national problem but man we need we need more police i know martinsburg um uh chief gibbons is doing all he can to recruit more officers boy we boy if you could be a police officer get out there and do it we need you um we need more uh proactive uh stuff here in west virginia uh, I mean, yeah, the border, all that stuff, but man, we need to get on, get get hot here in West Virginia, and the girls suffer the most because when you give up your body and you're having sex with all kinds of men, different men, and you're passed around from person to person, motel room to motel room, the drugs are just a symptom to numb them, so they're not mentally there as their bodies are being abused constantly and i know i'm speaking as a man and i know there's probably women out there going well you don't understand no i do understand i see it every day has it ever happened to me no uh, and 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 but it rips my heart out i i can't imagine i have four grown daughters i have four grandkids i can't imagine any buddies because i always say to somebody that's somebody's daughter that's somebody's mother yeah. uh one of the girls the other day sitting there her name is uh jamie sitting there telling me she's sober first time i seen her sober because her boyfriend was in jail uh now her boyfriend's out now she's back out using again and she's being prostituted again but she came to me and she sat with me and had lunch and i and i, and I got her a coke because she's also diabetic and she's sitting there sober and she's crying to me about she had a baby last year and her and the boyfriend made her abort it and she's had she's had other children that have been taken away from her and she wanted this baby but the boyfriend made her abort it and 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 if he if she didn't abort it he physically abused her did all kinds of stuff to her this is the kind of stuff we see every day she's just one story of many that I see and hear every day. I mean, she's somebody's mother, somebody's sister, somebody's daughter. Um, I, I get sick of it, and I get sick of. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, 
I see so many things, and I just go, man. And we're going to be able to. And it, 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 this is a God thing. This whole Morgan County thing, getting a shelter. That's if you add it up, nine beds for the ladies, six apartments. Really, it's it's fifteen beds. We're going to put on November 1st, 15 more new beds out there for women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it's 15 and there's more than 15, but that's 15 we can get in off the street. And hopefully Morgan County, that's going to increase as we get the funding up there in Morgan County. We get the people on board, the churches on board. I'm speaking in two weeks at the uh, Presbyterian Church in Berkeley Springs, my first time speaking at that church. That would be my 104th church that I've spoken at different churches. I've spoken at many churches more than once, but it would be my 104th church, uh, unique church I've spoken at since 2000, January night uh, night of 19 when I came here. So I've spoken at 104 churches. I hope to speak at a lot more churches, civic groups in Morgan County, and get those folks to support the Hope House so the Hope House can grow and get bigger and, and add more beds, add more uh, opportunity and services to the, to the Morgan County area. Is the Hope House itself equipped with the additional work and so forth to add beds, or would no? Would, we we would have to we'd have, so to, have to do yeah, an we'd have to we'd have to do yeah well or, we'd or probably, move yeah or, we'd yeah. have to move and I'm hoping somebody would be out there willing to give us four to five acres of property up there in Berkeley Springs some area or or Morgan County some area we could use some of that land and then start fresh hmm. you know and go from there. Have you guys thought about trying to put something for women in Martinsburg proper? Here's what I would say. Here's what I would say that I don't think that's a good idea. And, and here's and, and uh, coming from the Syracuse Rescue Mission, coming from the Turlock Gospel Mission in California, Syracuse Rescue Mission in in New York City. I mean, in uh, Syracuse, New York. You want to take the women and put them somewhere else because the boyfriends show up. I know what Epic and I know Bethany House, the biggest thing, the biggest issues they have is security. You want to put them further out away. You can help. Uh, it's, it, and I hate to use this term, but a military, you, help, you, you, you can deprogram them easier and then reprogram the right way. Um, they, they're not as tempted to say, hey, I'm out of here. My boyfriend just texted me. I'm out of here. And they walk out the door and the boyfriend's right there. Um, there's, you, you want to make as many hurdles as it can for the women to, because the women are easily, ah, I'm all going to get in trouble for saying this. Okay. And God forgive me if you're, if you're out there and, and this, bend, and this bends you out of shape, but the women are easily manipulated by the men to go back. You know, I forget all the syndrome names, you know, it's like when a woman is getting beaten and the, and the cops come in and grab the man and the woman jumps on the cops back going, Hey, that's my husband. He was just beating the daylights out of you. It's that syndrome. It's that thinking. And you got to get them away because they're, they're, they're taught that they're, that they're property. Okay. They, 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 they're taught as their property. Like this man who's in prison, his, his girlfriend's out here, she's clean and sober. But as soon as he comes out of prison, he she is the property of his of his of of him again and she automatically goes back to him and automatically does everything she says even though she could have left and gone at that point in time that's why there needs to be an interception there needs to be a, a, a space there needs to be out of there and because you can get the resources to come to you but you want to get them uh, sometimes you know getting them out of the environment getting them away from the people places and things that they're that they're used to um, that they can fall back on. Uh, you, you get them away from that, it, 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 the success rate can go up. Uh, you can have a higher success rate. Tim, hang on for a moment. This is a bit unconventional. Yeah, but, I know. I know. Um, Paul, uh, Speaker Pro Tem Paul Espinosa just called in from Charleston. Okay, I'm go gonna, ahead. We're going to do a little donut here. Speaking of uh, funnel cakes, I want to get Paul in here real quickly because I want to get an update of what's going on in Charleston. We're going to circle back to you, Tim. Paul, thank you so much for your patience and holding. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, good morning, Tim. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good to be with you. And uh, sorry to interrupt the segment there, but uh, Robert asked me to check in if possible before we gavel in here in a few minutes. Appreciate you doing that, Paul. What are you guys uh, accomplishing down there from yesterday to today? I got an update from Mike Hornby yesterday as to what had happened the day previously and, and what do you hope to accomplish today? Well, we hope to wrap up the uh, special session today. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're scheduled to gavel in uh, here in the House here uh, really any minute, uh, just uh, making a few, uh, final, uh, few final uh, preparations here before uh, we gavel in. Uh, yesterday, uh, the House opted to send 
uh, essentially all the bills that we were going to be considering, uh, we did divide bills between the House and the Senate just to divide the, uh, I think there was approximately 44 different uh, proposed pieces of legislation by the governor that were placed on the call. I'd say roughly half of those went to the Senate, half to the House. So the Senate, uh, from my, to my understanding, I think they made pretty quick work of their uh, of their consideration, and uh, they pretty much dealt with them on the floor and passed them out. The House decided to send all of our bills to committee so that we could thoroughly vet uh, you know, each of the bills, uh, not only the ones that went to finance, but bills that went to House Judiciary. Um, I think one of the things we heard from our members is that, you know, while they, they certainly saw, you know, um, uh, value in, in in most of the governor's proposals, uh, they really wanted to vet them to just make sure that they were items that really needed to be addressed you know, during a special session where there is a limited time to do vetting as opposed during the regular session. So the House, for example, I think we probably pared back uh, the proposed uh, supplementals uh, by about $300 million. Now, again, we're still negotiating with the Senate and, you know, somewhere, you know, we'll probably meet in the middle somewhere is where we come down on some of the piece of legislation. But we did uh, try to take a, a, a cautious approach and just make sure if it, if it wasn't something that was really imperative that we do today, uh, if it was something that we could wait until our regular session when there is more time to thoroughly vet uh, proposed spending, that's the approach that our House Finance Committee uh, took. And it was a marathon session yesterday. A couple of things that did come out that, uh, you know, were at really the top of the list, I think, of the governor's proposed items, obviously trying to address the, the challenges we're experiencing with corrections. And uh, I think the uh, likelihood is is that we'll enact uh, somewhere in the range of a $25 million corrections bill that will provide needed uh, salary increases for our uh, uniform corrections officers. One of the things we also heard loud and clear is that the non-uniformed officers, uh, we needed to do something to show some good faith to them. Uh, while you know, it, it, we weren't able to really come up with a permanent fix to their uh, ch their challenges that they're facing, we did uh, in-house uh, finance uh, pass out a $2,300 retention bonus uh, that would be, be paid in October to those non-uniformed uh, corrections officers and then another $2,300 retention bonus that would be paid out in March. And again, the intent there is to provide some immediate relief for those folks and let them know that it is something that we're going to uh, work very hard on uh, during the upcoming regular session. Uh, fire uh, uh, fighters, that's another issue that uh, you know was kind of front and center. We've heard loud and clear from a lot of our volunteer companies around the state uh, just the challenges that they're, they're experiencing and so uh, would anticipate that we're going to enact somewhere in the range of about a $12 million uh, one-time supplemental that would provide some additional funding for our volunteer fire companies. A portion of that already is paid uh, through, it's funded uh, through uh, a uh, fee that uh, is assessed on uh, uh, homeowners' uh, uh, homeowner insurance uh, policies, but uh, it looks like we're going to approve an additional $3 million uh, that would be paid based on population. So I think that's something, if we're able to get that uh, supplemental cross, cross the line, obviously that would help uh, uh, more populated areas like uh, Jefferson and Berkeley counties uh, more so just because that is based on population, and then another uh, three three million dollar one time supplemental as well uh, that would uh, aid firefighters. So again, it's not all that I think uh, some of our firefighters and EMS had hoped for, but I do think that's going to be uh, some immediate help that will help uh, those uh, very important volunteers. Paul, thank you very much. Was there anything else you needed to add to that information? No, uh, again, I would anticipate that we're going to wrap up uh, today, if, if at all possible. Uh, once, of course, once once we uh, act on on both House and Senate bills today, uh, they'll need to go back to the Senate for concurrence. But we are scheduled to wrap up our regularly scheduled interims today, so it looks like we'll be able to complete complete the special session in that same uh, time period as well. And was that delegate height that had offered the two twenty three hundred dollar payments to correctional officers? He did. He did. Really commend him for working on that. While we were doing some other uh, working on some other legislation, he was able to craft that based on some input that we'd received from other members. And so uh, 
a, a great job by, by Mike Height. Uh, he, he's one of our uh, new MVPs down here. He's doing a great <laughs> job, and uh, he was able to craft that. And I think there's going to be good support in our caucus for that proposed legislation. I appreciate you squeezing us in before the gavel drops today, Paul. You still there? Guess the gavel dropped. <laughs> no, I'm I'm back now. I oh, lost you for a second. Can you hear me? Yes, I appreciate no, you squeezing us in today. Absolutely, y'all have a great day. Hope everybody weathered the storm. Okay, I understand. It got a little dicey over there. It, it got a little scary for a while. Yes. All right. Yeah. Have a great day, gentlemen. You Thanks, too. Paul. And that is Speaker Pro Tem Delegate Paul Espinosa. Appreciate his uh, information. A good report there as to what uh, we can expect with a couple of major items there, corrections, and the volunteer fire departments too. Tim, as we wrap this up, uh, what day is uh, September's big moment here? Coming? September September 9th at Berkeley Springs. It's going to start around, I think, at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning and wrap up around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, come on out. Also, go to the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission dot com hit the donate button for the 604 project so we can finish that up and get that two hundred thousand dollar raised and again matt thank you to your church i'm telling you it was the greatest cornhole tournament <laughs> uh, it, and, and the guys i mean they they can't wait for the next one and thanks things like that that means a lot to those guys i mean you guys came fellowship had a great time and it was a blast. Thanks yeah, for awesome. thanks yeah. for doing that. Thanks for doing that. How many guys at the mission participated? Oh shoot, every, I think everybody. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. our guys that are disabled were able to play, and mm -hmm. that and that's that's the neat thing about it. They everybody felt so involved and welcome and part of it. And and and, and I mean, it, it our guys are so neat. You do things like mm -hmm. that, and they just come alive, man. And they just uh, they're talking about. It. They're like, hey, can we do it again? I said, well, we'll oh, have absolutely. to get, yeah. yeah, it was so, it, it was a blast. And the, we had some great pictures too. <laughs> and thanks for bringing me in. I appreciate this, brother. You you know, and thanks, John. I, you guys are great. And thanks for uh, getting the word out. I mean, you guys are great. I, I couldn't do it without you guys. I really, really appreciate everything you guys do. And I'll tell you, um, it matters. It matters. You guys are helping and we're helping one person at a time get off the streets and it matters you guys cool. do a great job Thanks, thank Tim. you and and uh, great job by the community and i know the work you do in fundraising because i think it was about six months ago you were five hundred thousand yes, away we were. yes we were yes we were yes <laughs> that's we were. great stuff keep up the great work man thank you pastor tim garino from the martinsburg union rescue mission